She says, figure it out. I know, Zoe. <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey guys, what do you do when your baby bird is biting? Well, I've actually done several videos on this before, but now we have a puppy. And I gotta tell you, there's the puppy. If you think, Arch, come here. She's not biting me, come here. she's really gentle. If you think parrots bite, and look at I'm her. not saying they don't, but Arch is like, I'm sleeping. But um, I gotta tell you guys, the puppy is like, you are my true toy. And I'm like, no, I'm not. So I have actually hired a puppy trainer because I wanted to make sure that my puppy is going to be well-trained, but biting is definitely in there. So how do my trainer and I already think that things apply to parrots as well? And what does this mean for your baby parrot biting? I want her to bite me and, so I can do you know, the biting technique. How can you help me. this along? Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Blue Bond. I have over 22 species of parrots. I love my parrots. This here is Merlin, who might be our latest flock member. Are you our latest flock member, huh? Merlin is a blue-headed macaw and awesome. Aren't you? Uh, this might be one of the best macaw species. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I'm not feeding you now. Hi. And, um... Apparently, I've upset my parrot lads. But um, let's get to it because my mission is to help you, in this case, reduce the painful bites. I know that there are people who get bitten by their parrot and then, like, never want to take it out of its cage before. And I get it. I understand. But, of course, that's neither fun for you nor your parrot. And, you know, then, you know, that's just not what we want. So... Let's talk about biting. So the interesting thing, in the doggy behavior world, there is now an acronym, ABI, uh, Automated Biting Inhibition, I think. I think that's what the A was. And basically, what's so interesting and what that means is that there is a time during puppyhood when a puppy is not necessarily feeding, but learning the strength of their bite. Now this is fascinating and phenomenal to me because I have talked about the fact that when parrots are young, they go through a something similar like a puppy teething phase where they're biting and they're learning the strength of their um, beak. So that, I've said to you guys many times with all of my parrots, you know, Unless they are doing something that biting is also used for, like defending themselves if they're scared. Um, my adult parrotlets, my adult um, kayaks, um, a lot of our adult parrots don't bite. And that's pretty phenomenal because I have, for example, some parrotlets that have, when even when they have a clutch and they're in a hormonal defensive, I'm gonna keep my baby safe, they still don't bite us. They might like kind of threaten us and they might kind of um, go like that. Like, you know, they're protecting, right? They're making it clear. Oh, that was right in my ear, sweetie. But they don't really bite us. And I think it's because they also have that ABI. So what that means is that when a animal at least it seems to me a dog or a parrot is young, one of the things that they have to learn is the strength of their bite. Because, you know, they're biting things, but they don't know how hard to bite, and they have the ability to bite hard to feed themselves, of course. So what happens is with our puppy, we started to do what the trainer said, which sort of only made perfect sense, and now it's like, it's kind of like one of those duh moments. It makes perfect sense. And that is that, oh my, that um, when the puppy bites, we, we make a sound of pain, right? Like if the puppy bites and it's not hard, 
They need to do that because they're learning and they're playing. Like that's developmental and it's developmentally correct and they need to be able to do it. But if they hurt you, you need to give them that feedback. So now when my puppy bites and it hurts, I'll go, ow, you know, that kind of thing. Of course, louder. Um, and it's interesting, just like they say in the parrot world, everyone says, how do you teach not to bite? You don't move your finger. I'm like, well, that's painful. But you do the same with your puppy. You don't move your finger. You make that sound and the sound kind of startles them. It's like, whoa, because they do want to be in the pack, just like the parrot really does want to be in the flock. So I observed that with my parrotlets, for example, the babies bite. I never have a parrotlet by itself. I, if you guys know me, I believe very strongly that parrots, just like puppies, just like my sugar gliders, they are social animals. That's why parrots are in flocks, puppies are in packs, sugar gliders are in colonies. And so that is a, a crucial structure to their not only survival, but like their family mode, right? So that means that they need to be a part of and they need to fit in. And so I'm sitting here going, you know, I always have my birds with birds and my parrotlets, when they're young, they're raised with other parrotlets. And I'm like, you know what? They teach each other that ABI. I'm, I'm pretty darn sure because you see them, you see your parrots like bite each other and one goes, ah. you know, they get mad. They make a sound really I, to me, just like the dog. So one of um, the takeaways is, I hate to tell you, but um, you have to really have more than one bird. And I know, I know that sometimes, you know what, actually, I gotta tell you that I think that's gonna make having a bird easier. And so one thing that's really cool is we haven't had to go to a puppy trainer for a long time, or we're really happy to see, it's so cool to me that puppy training has advanced and after, humans having puppies for so long, I wouldn't think that there would be an advancement in the last 20 years, but there really has been. A lot of psychology has been added, a lot of positive reinforcement. It's very, very cool. So um, they're saying the same thing with puppies. They're saying, you know, you have to socialize them. They have to have that social time. It's, it's just so important because otherwise when they're older, they're not going to know how to approach other humans or other dogs. And I say to you the same, the same exact thing I've always observed about parrots and I've basically always said it. And so I'm sitting here going, I could get bitten by my baby parrots or I could let the flock figure it out, which is what I noticed Caesar Milan does. He really, anytime someone's having a problem with their dog and like they can't take care of it just with their dog, his answer is bring them to my ranch. I'm going to introduce them to my pack. Always. Or your dog doesn't know how to walk. Well, let's walk down the street with other dogs. I brought my dogs with me because my dogs know how to behave and they're going to help your dogs learn proper dog behavior. Well, the same is really true with parrots. If you're teaching your parrot tricks and you want your second parrot to learn how to do it, you have the second parrot watch. My puppy trainer actually said that he's also trained parrots. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, you're, you're my trainer then. And, you know, he said, he's like, you know, parrots are easier to train because they're more intelligent. So if you only have one baby parrot and it's biting you, you are going to have to be the flock. And frankly, I'm pretty sure you're only one person. And so I am saying you're going to have to do something that's kind of impossible. But you do your best. And if I were you, I would play with doing the ow. Like, you want to make an, an abrupt sound because what it is is... A, it's a pattern interrupter. The parrot is in one mindset. They're biting you. They're playing. They're trying to, you know, they're figuring everything out. They don't, they're, they're new to life. They're figuring everything out. And if you do nothing, they'll keep doing it. Whereas if you go, ah, it's like they go, what, what? And they start to realize that, oh, you know, now if it gets really bad, you don't castigate them. You don't punish them. You put them somewhere safe. I mean, you should be somewhere safe so that you don't even have to worry. And then you walk away. Why? Because now they didn't get a negative consequence, but the flock left. And they're like, I want to be in the flock. And so they will start to do behaviors that don't get them left behind kind of thing. 
So do it lovingly, do it with the intent of making sure that the flock works for you and for them. And let me know how it goes because in some ways I feel like we've always done this. I've just sort of now, it's like a light has been set on it. And in other ways, it, it's sort of a, you know, a new perspective. So I can't wait to hear how it works out for you. I will catch you in the next feathered video.